Neurological Disorders Lesson 5.2 How Do Drugs Alter Synaptic Transmission? The goal of this lesson is to demonstrate how drugs of abuse affect synaptic transmission. And at the end of this lesson, students should be able to describe how different drugs of abuse alter synaptic transmission and explain that by altering synaptic transmission, all drugs of abuse increase signaling in the reward pathway. We'll achieve these goals with a Socratic discussion and a jigsaw on drugs of abuse. To prepare for this lesson, you'll need to review the key scientific concepts presented in it. They include the brain's reward circuit, the process of synaptic transmission, and the mechanism by which drugs of abuse alter synaptic transmission and increase signaling in the reward pathway. The drugs included in this lesson are cocaine, amphetamine, nicotine, alcohol, heroin and morphine, and marijuana. You can review the scientific content in the background reading provided to you in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. The teacher primer provides in-depth knowledge about the scientific content presented in the lesson. The teacher manual or lesson plan provides minute-by-minute -minute explanation of lesson structure, including instructions on how to manage the discussion and activity, and the student workbook provides additional explanation for your students. You'll need to be sure to print the jigsaw readings, the jigsaw worksheets, and the homework worksheets for your students. The key point of the lessons due now is to engage students with the concept that drugs of abuse increase signaling in the reward pathway. We'll get there with a peer-to-peer -peer discussion. In the do now, you'll tell students that addictive drugs increase synaptic transmission in the reward pathway and have them work with a partner to brainstorm ways in which drugs of abuse could increase synaptic signaling. The key points of the discussion are to review the components and connections in the brain's reward circuit, as well as to review the process of synaptic transmission. We'll get to these key points with a Socratic discussion. You'll use slide three of the lesson PowerPoint to review the brain's reward circuit with your students, and slide four to introduce students to a new way of representing that circuit. Slide four also allows you to discuss the fact that the VTA receives projections from many areas of the brain, and some of those connections are inhibitory represented here with a gray circle and inhibitory connection. After reviewing the reward pathway, you'll use slide 5 to review the process of synaptic transmission. This slide is animated so you can review each step in the process one at a time. This slide also lets you introduce the fact that the VTA uses the neurotransmitter dopamine to signal to the nucleus accumbens. The key point of the activity is to explore the mechanisms by which drugs of abuse alter synaptic transmission and increase signaling in the reward pathway. The drugs of abuse included in the jigsaw are cocaine, amphetamine, nicotine, alcohol, heroin and morphine, and marijuana. We'll get to this key point with a jigsaw on drugs of abuse. During the jigsaw, students will complete jigsaw readings, which allow them to explore the mechanisms by which drugs of abuse affect synaptic transmission and the reward pathway. The drugs covered in the jigsaw are, again, cocaine, amphetamine, nicotine, alcohol, heroin and morphine, and marijuana. In caution, you'll want to be sure to double check that the jigsaw readings are at an appropriate reading level for your students. To help students focus on the most important details of each of the case studies, give each student a jigsaw worksheet that has them take notes on those key points, which are the drug's site of action and the reward pathway, the drug's target at the synapse, and the drug's effect on dopamine levels in the nucleus accumbens. You can review all of this information in the Jigsaw Worksheet Answer Key. It has everything organized just as your students will be organizing it. Additionally, the Teacher Primer and Teacher Manual go over all the key scientific concepts about each of these drugs. After the students have completed their Jigsaw readings and taking notes on it, you'll organize a teach back in which students will teach each other about the drug they investigated. This could be organized as small group discussions or done as an entire class. During the teach back, you may choose to use slide 7 to help your students see where each drug acts within the reward pathway, and slides 8 through 10 to demonstrate that drugs have different targets within the synapse. Slides 8 through 10 are organized in the order of synapses within this reward pathway. So first, you have the synapse leading to activation of the inhibitory neuron, then you have the synapse between the inhibitory neuron and the VTA, and finally, you have the synapse between the VTA and nucleus accumbens. Each of these synapses has different receptors, which is why and how different drugs act at different sites in the brain or reward pathway. The key point of the wrap-up is that while all drugs of abuse have different mechanisms of action, all increased dopamine signaling between the VTA and nucleus accumbens.
We'll get to this key point with a reflection and discussion. During the wrap-up, you'll ask students, what do all the drugs have in common? The picture on slide 11 illustrates where all the drugs act within the reward pathway. And by stepping through the action of the circuit, students should see that all drugs of abuse increase dopamine signaling at the nucleus accumbens, and they're all addictive. The key point of the homework is that there are many perspectives on the issue of animal use in scientific research. We'll get to this key point by researching a prevalent perspective on the issue. To prepare for Lesson 5.3, in which the students will complete a structured academic controversy on the issue of animal use in scientific research, students will research one of the prevalent perspectives on the issue. This research could be completed using the prepared homework readings or readings in the workbook for Lesson 5.3, or could be completed by giving students the homework worksheet with questions and letting them find the information on the organization's websites. Students often ask for more details about the different drugs. You can find more in the teacher primer, the teacher manual, and the student workbook. One of the most common questions teachers get is, how does blank, insert the name of drug of abuse here, work? This is a great question because sadly, there are lots of abuse drugs that we didn't include within the lessons jigsaw readings. One way to approach this question is to allow your students to do more research. And two great resources for that are the websites for the National Institute of Drug Abuse, or NIDA, and NIDA's website for teens. Both of these sites have pages dedicated to information about specific drugs of abuse, including anabolic steroids, bath salts, cough and cold medicines, inhalants, MDMA, prescription drugs, salvia, and spice. At the end of this lesson, students should appreciate that while all drugs of abuse have a different mechanism of action within the synapse, they all increase the levels of dopamine signaling in the nucleus accumbens. This lesson builds on student understanding the reward pathway and the process of synaptic transmission, and it also links to discussions of synaptic transmission and neural circuits to the concept of drug addiction. Don't forget, if you have any questions, concerns, or feedback to let us know, you can contact any of the CTSC team members and we'd be more than happy to help you.